this is part two of the restoration of the body. Uh, when, when salvation, God brought salvation into the earth, he was to save us or re redeem us from that which was lost. Well, what did man lose in, in the garden? They didn't, they didn't lose a religion, they lost a relationship, but in losing that relationship, they lost the ability to not die. They lost the communication, uh, the, said Adam and Eve walked with God. Uh, they lost the glory, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. They were clothed in glory. Therefore, because they were clothed in glory in the beginning, they uh, death, sickness, disease, aging could not touch them. Nothing of the curse could touch them until they uh, rebelled from God and the glory departed and they were vulnerable then become the Bible often talks about sin that causes us to be naked and meaning uh, we don't have the protection over our lives and our bodies like we used to have God never is that my coon hang on skater um, God, God never intended for mankind to die. He never, He did not create us to die. If He was came, He came to redeem us for what we lost. What did we lose? Eternal. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't know if I'll keep this or not. But isn't he cute? He's so cute. His mama got run over, and uh, the sow got ran over out in the street, and somebody saw this little guy about to die it's crawling out from under an old building and I he's the 14th I think he's the 14th coon that I've raised I've raised squirrels and, and and skunks and lots and lots of deer living out here things get they get orphaned so you got okay go down there you go all right back to the story um so when we God came to God planned on redeeming because he can't let the devil win I mean think logically y'all just think logically don't think religiously think in truth and reality and take God at his word is there anything impossible with God no I mean salvation itself seemed impossible how could man be saved after he was so ridden with sin but Jesus did it and uh, so if he came to redeem that which was lost what did we lose we lost the ability to live forever and the Bible says that death is the last enemy to be defeated I mean to be put under our feet uh, I said that wrong because it's the last enemy to be put under our feet uh, to, to be Jesus defeated it first uh, Timothy 2 Timothy 1 10 said Jesus abolished death I mean he obliterated it but it has to be worked out and as I said in the last program that we are walking in the earnest of our salvation the down payment of our salvation and the, not the fullness and the fullness is set that's why the Bible says in uh, uh, Romans chapter I mean Hebrews chapter 11 the the work honor call of you know honor roll of faith and uh, of the heroes of the faith that's why it says that these some of these died not receiving the promises and and it talks about that they are waiting for us they can't fulfill everything that they saw and that they planted into the earth until the general the last generation that comes into the fullness of Christ I want to come and receive the fullness of Christ but even if I don't even if I die and and do not receive what I'm talking about today what I'm doing is I am bringing it into this atmosphere because the kingdom of God is voice activated and so you have to believe it you've got to see it in your mind and you've got to speak it and I'm speaking it into the earth and into your heart and your ears and if you'll receive it as Isaiah 43 18 says God is doing a new thing and and first corinthians chapter 2 says that what he does for those that love him the earth has never seen it before so god is not i mean if god had 
if the greatest thing that, that God was going to do is in the past, then God is not infinite. He's not in, He's finite. So everything that he does, he, he's never done the best. Because if you have the best, then you can't top that. And God always tops it. So what is God going to do? Let me go to Romans again. Romans chapter 8. And I want to start with verse 17. And uh, it says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now, you've got to understand that when he's talking about being glorified, he's talking about carrying the kavod, the, the kavod, the weightiness, the, the uh, awesomeness the, of God, his covering. Well, whenever you're covered, you and I are covered with the glory of God, there can be no uh, evidence of the curse left. The glory wipes all that out, just like a bright light dispels all darkness. It can't, they can't coincide, all right? The very first thing that God did when he created in the earth was he divided light from dark from light. He divided it, and it's not to coexist, all right? So when we get full of the glory of God, sin, death, all of the curse, which is weakness, death, dying, getting old, aging, and getting weaker, and, and, and all of that, that can't, that can't exist in our bodies anymore. All right, I gotta get back to the word. For I reckon, okay, see, I think, I think Paul was a Southerner because he said, I reckon, and I come from the Ozarks, and even in Texas, I, we say, I reckon along with I'm fixing to. Everything in Texas is we're fixing to, okay? Uh, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, you can put that off to after you die and go to heaven if you want because definitely they're in the glory. But I'm telling you, what God said is he's coming to restore and redeem. So where was Adam and Eve? Where did they carry the glory? On the earth. So where will he have to bring it back to its original where people carry the glory? In the earth. Or the devil could say, bow your knee to me because you can't get it done unless you take me out of the equation. Therefore, I'm bigger than you. And we know that's not true. So God has to have a people who carry the glory be, and, and, and not die, defeat death, because it's the last enemy to be put under our feet. The feet is in the body. I am part of the body. So it has to be placed under the body of Christ. And it says then, our, then where, death, where is your sting? And grave, where is your victory? All right. For the earnest expectation of creation waits for they're waiting for, creation is still waiting for, and earnestly expecting the manifestation of the sons of God. Sons meaning weos, the mature sons of God. For all of creation was made subject to vanity or to our sin, not willing, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Right there, it says, the, create, the creature or the creation itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty, who, what, of the children of God. So, on this earth, we, there is a time, God is, is going to bring it forth into the earth, something that's never been seen before, where a corporate body of people who believe in him will step out of the, of the, uh, of the corruption that has been ruling and reigning in our bodies, and it will be reversed and restored. You know, the Bible says, um, it says, what, uh, let me see. Where, uh, I forgot where it's at. Uh, where it's uh, talking about... Well, heck, I forgot where it's at. But it was talking about... Uh, yes, right here. Thank you, Lord. But if the spirit of him that raised... Uh, the, uh, this is verse 11 of Romans chapter 8. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, that word quicken means make alive, your mortal bodies. So that means not my resurrected body necessarily, but my mortal body, my body that while it is on earth, mortal, not dead, he's got to make it alive uh, by his spirit that dwells in you. Now let me get back to the rest of that chapter. Uh, because the cre creation itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So all of creation is waiting on us to, to step into maturity so that God can trust us with the full restoration, the fullness of salvation, which is the adoption of our bodies, which means it's the restoration of the redemption of our bodies. Let me go on and read this because it's in the Word. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. All of creation is groaning because they're under a load of sin. And, and they're, they're, you know, <laughs> the, the whole story of, of uh, you know, that everything, the evolution, is such a lie because everything is getting better on its own. Nothing gets better on its own. Nothing gets better left to itself. A house not lived in gets deteriorates a car not driven the engine i mean more it everything gets old and cracked and 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 all even if it doesn't have miles on it 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 deteriorates uh your children if they're left alone they don't get better when your children are left alone they don't get better so everything that is left alone does not evolve into something higher. It, it, takes, it takes the hand of God and, and moving with the Spirit of God because, hello, we came from the presence and the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that brings us in to back. To back to who he is he created us in his likeness and in his image and his likeness and his image doesn't have death in it and so he's got to bring us back to who he uh who he is and who he created us to be which doesn't carry the signs of death which is aging and weakness and all of that all right i will get this read or we're gonna have part three uh, that's a very strong possibility um okay Verse 23, and not only they, uh, well, let me go back to 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. Not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, the, the uh, down payment, the earnest of our salvation, Ephesians 1, 18 or 14. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body hell life it's saying waiting for the adoption he didn't he's not waiting to get saved when we are saved we're not adopted we're born again if you are born into a family you don't have to be adopted you're only adopted when you're not born into that family but he's talking about he says waiting for the adoption, there's the coon. Hey, Skeeter, get out. Get out. Okay, you didn't see that. Uh, waiting for the adoption, meaning it is waiting for uh, the redemption, it says, of our body. This is in the Word. You can't tear this out. It, it, it's good news. The gospel is good news. Let me just say this. You know, if, okay. Let me, let me tell y'all the good news. The good news. World War II is over. Yay. It's awesome, y'all. World War II is over. Why don't you just jump? Why are you not so excited? It's good news. Yes, it's good news, but it's old news. It's not news. It's, it's, it's past news. It's not news now. It's good, but it's not news anymore. Okay, so if all you can preach is just come to Jesus and get your sins forgiven so that you can go to heaven when you die, that is not the gospel. That is the entrance into the gospel. It's, 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 it's not, 
we've heard it and we've heard it and 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 much of the world is is turning a deaf ear to it and which they shouldn't i'm not saying that 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 it's that should but what i'm saying is the gospel is continually good news meaning that what we don't know it all meaning that there's always more there's always more we have not stepped into the fullness of what god has given us and it's still good news that's like woohoo this is awesome well i never heard that before Right, because we're a generation that is to build on the foundation. And even even Paul said that. I believe it was in Hebrews where he said, he said, you got to go on. I think chapter six, you you Hebrews, you he said, not laying again the foundation. And he talks about the foundation of salvation. He said, We've got to go on. There's more, y'all. Okay. Uh for we waiting for the adoption, the which is the redemption of our bodies. Redemption means fully redeem the fullness of brought back who we were meant to be in the beginning. For we are saved, verse 24, by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, what is he yet hope for? But if we hope for that that we do not see, then we with patience wait for it. <coughs> Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not uh, what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself or Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, verse 28, Romans 8, 28. We all know that. I wish I had my water handy. <clears throat> for whom he did for an up. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did for an up. He also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. That's the purpose of God to conform us to the image of his son. I looked up the word image. Get this. It means a bodily representation and earthly image. So if you're going to believe Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose, and, and along with Romans 28, 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestined. He predetermined us to be conformed to the image of His Son. That means a bodily representation of Jesus on the earth. Not in heaven, on the earth. Okay? Uh, that, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay? He's the, he, we know He's the firstborn. But He's not to be the only one, y'all. I mean, He's okay. We're to be like him. He's, we're lords, but he's the Lord of lords. We're kings, but he's the king of kings. We're to be priests, but he is the great high priest. He is to be the firstborn among many brethren. 1 John 4, 17 says, as he is, not as he was on the earth, but as he is now, the resurrected Jesus. As he is, so are we. Where, when we die and go to heaven, in the earth y'all you can't you can't erase scripture you got to take it all god oh this is good news i'm not telling you anything bad so don't choke on it the thing is is that god wants to do something that's never yet been done in the earth to hair lift the devil because he thinks he's going to corrupt all of mankind and he's doing a good job i mean you gotta admit he's a good at his job the devil is the whole thing is like why does he want to corrupt us because we carry in our dna the fingerprint of god we're the only creation on the planet that god touched everything else he created with his words with his voice but mankind he formed us 
his fingerprint is in us and then he breathed into us his spirit to make us in his image in his likeness and then we fell from that place and so he came to redeem us from that place redemption isn't just getting you into heaven which is a good thing i mean that's an incredible thing okay i like that but it isn't just about that. It's about also redeeming the planet, bringing the planet back to what it was originally called to be and bringing us back to who we're called to be. And God, what he has called us to be is like him, to be the firstborn among many brethren. You know, I heard uh, the story of Bobby Connor said, and he was telling the Lord, he said, Lord, there's just no one like you. There's just no one like you. And he said, the Lord said, yeah, and isn't that a shame? God doesn't want to be the only one. He wants to be the firstborn among many brethren. Ah, I see the sun is going down and I'm not done with this thing here. Let me see if I can get more light, I reckon. Okay, so uh, moreover him that he... Whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he also called, those he justified. And who he justified, those he also glorified. He wants us to walk in his glory. Carry his glory. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is not working, is it? Okay. Um sorry about that but i don't want to go back and redo all of this so just i guess live with it um for the glory of the lord is risen upon you god has planned on us carrying his glory and the devil has done such a great job in corrupting mankind why does he want to corrupt us because did you know this i'll put it in another teaching i'm not going to put it in this one did you know this that they they have proven that in our dna in the strand of our dna is the same sequence there is an over and over and over sequence that is in the sequence of the name of god which is yod hey bob hey it is that same sequence, six, five, uh, 10, 5, 6, 5, I believe is what it is. That same sequence is in the blood, the, the DNA of human beings. In other words, every human, even those who are not born again, have the DNA, the fingerprint of God in their bodies. Why do you think the devil is working so hard to destroy our bodies with sickness and disease and kill us? He doesn't even care that much if we go to heaven. He just wants us wiped off this planet because he wants every bit of the evidence of God's uh, uh, God's uh, awareness, his, his DNA that God exists. He, he wants to destroy the very fact that God exists. And so he wants to destroy your and my body. What do you think meth is all about? I mean, you see that and you wonder why do you, you see these beautiful girls and then a year or two after taking meth, if they haven't died yet, they look like an old hag. Why would you do that? I don't, I don't, it's got, it has to have such a horrible pull to it. But the devil loves to bring corruption into our bodies. And God has paid the price. Jesus paid the price that that corruption is defeated. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1.10 is, is where he said he abolished death. God wants to wipe that out. The Bible says that in, in multiple places, like three or four places, I didn't mean to go there, uh, but it, it says that he would not allow the Holy One to uh, be corrupted. I, I'm one of his Holy Ones. And I tell you what, I am believing that God is about to do something that he has never done yet on planet earth he's sown the seeds for it but the fullness of it has not yet happened and that is where there is a people that are transformed transfigured into his image and likeness we arise and shine for the glory of the lord is risen upon us isaiah 60 says and it's a time where darkness is on the face of the earth and gross darkness is on the people but his light his glory arises on us and will be seen on us and kings will come to the brightness of our rising 
that it has to be seen. There has to be a, 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 a manifestation evidence of it, and it's going to have to be in our bodies. Our bodies are going to be totally revamped and restored. Matter of fact, uh, I, I'll, just, I'll just close this out with one other verse, and it's, it's one of my favorite ones now. Uh, I'm hoping that this will work, that it's not screwed up and I do it all over again, but um, hang on. It's Psalm 110. I got to find Psalm first. Psalm 110. And uh, I love, okay, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies thy footstool. He said the last enemy to be put under feet is death. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou. The rod is like the branch. It's, it, the rod means, this word rod, it means branch extended. He's the vine, I'm the branches. He's going to extend himself through his body, the branches. This is talking about people. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion talking about his people, rule thou in the midst of your enemies. He's not talking about taking us away from our enemies and, and so that we can be okay. He's telling us to rule in the midst of our enemies. Didn't Psalm 23 said that he will prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies? Okay, and it says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. I love the way the Hebrew says it. Says it. The Hebrew says, More than the womb of the morning, you shall have the dew of your youth. Whoa, what is that promising? That Look at that. Not only is that restoration of youth, the dew of your youth, you know what happens. Dew, dew covers. It says, but it says more than the womb of the morning, the birthplace of the beginning of time. So he's saying more than what I did for Adam and Eve at the birthplace of the beginning of time, more than that, you will be covered, dew covers with the dew of your youth. It, it's, it's a promise that God is going to say, devil, you think you can screw up my plan? I'll show you. Watch this. I'll show you. I will bring forth a people that is that is even more glorious and more beautiful than than in the in the in the beginning of time. Now I tell you what. Look at this. When uh, I'll close with this. Uh, when they when God was bringing the Israelites uh, across the Jordan River, and we know that Jordan represents, you know, its but it, it its meaning is like in an out and an analogies and stuff is death. All right, when they crossed the Jordan River, it says that, you know, he had the priest to go out and stand in the midst of the river and the waters rolled back all the way to the city of Adam. I don't think that's an accident that God said it rolled all the way back to a city that was called Adam. In other words, God says, I'm going to roll death back all the way to Adam. He's going to, he restored the years that the locust and the canker worm have eaten because we fell away from God. God is into restoration, not just your spirit, not just your soul, but the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. It's going to be done. I'd like, I hope, I want to be one of the ones that gets to do it. There, we will follow the Lord in transfiguration. He was transfigured. Therefore, we can be transfigured. And he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Thank you for watching. This is Crystal Lyon, Calgary Logic. You know what? I keep forgetting to say this. If you've got any questions or any remarks, all you've got to do is email me. Uh, my website is crystallions.com. Crystallions.com. You can go there and you can contact me, email me. We can pray for you. I have a wonderful prayer team. Whatever. Uh, Anyway, there you go. God bless you. Hope to see you next time.